Before the industrial revolution, people slept in two distinct phases, like how I do these days with a newborn at home. But then with artificial lighting and the industrial work schedules, people started sleeping in one big session. And sleep is so important for your physical health, your mental well-being, cognitive function, emotional health, memory, problem solving, creativity, immune function, weight control, even longevity. It's crucial for you to have a good night's sleep as many times as possible. And it depends on you so much. And that's why for the last 15 years, I've tried everything you can think of. Health sensors, wearables, smartwatches, sleep tracking headbands, under the mattress sensors, smartwatch apps next to my bed, artificial sound, artificial light, everything you can think of. So here is what I've learned over the last 15 years, and hopefully you will start your sleep tracking sessions with these insights too. What matters the most? Three things. You have to find out what kind of quality of sleep do you need, about deep sleep and REM phases, how many hours of sleep do you need, and how energized you feel in the morning. And all this is intrinsically personal. It depends on your genetic background, on your lifestyle choices, even on your diet. But there are a few things you can go through, a few steps, very practical ones, that will help you get the most out of your sleep. As I mentioned, I have a newborn at home. Of course, we have bad sleep sessions, but I know exactly what makes my sleep sessions even worse or what kind of things I could introduce to try to get the most out of it. And I do it every single day because sleep tracking is the holy grail of health tracking. Please start tracking your sleep, no matter how. If it's an app on your phone, if you have a smartwatch doing that or a health sensor, you want to buy a wearable or just on pe with a pen and paper, old school methods, please start dedicating efforts to finding out what makes you have a good night's sleep and what features parts of your life or your daily decisions will ruin your sleep quality. The technology you use doesn't matter, but your efforts do. The simplest way to start tracking your sleep is by giving a score between 1 and 10 to how energized you feel in the morning. Might sound ridiculous in the age of advanced technologies and artificial intelligence, but that's what matters the most. Maybe you have a lot of hours during the night, maybe you have big deep sleep sessions, but if you don't feel rested enough in the morning, then something doesn't work. If you start doing that, I guarantee you after a week, you will start noticing patterns. First, maybe you will find out those things that can improve your sleep quality. For example, in my case, very early in the process, I found out that if I read a paperback book before going to bed, it will make me fall asleep even easier. At the same time, you will start noticing patterns about things that ruin your sleep quality. Again, in my case, I found out that too much screen time before going to bed or a late exercise or a late dinner will lead to a bad sleep quality. Of course, I still decide to do these things, like when I'm in Spain, we have a late dinner and I love doing that with friends, but then I know that my sleep quality will not be as good as it normally is. After a few weeks, you will find out the three major things that impact your sleep. What kind of quality of sleep do you need? I know that based on the data, if I have at least one long deep sleep session, I'm gonna be fine for the whole day. It's a 60 minute session, saves my day. Even if I can't sleep for seven and a half, eight hours, but I have one long deep sleep session, that's all I need. Now, of course, these days I don't have it, but at least I know what I should fight for. I found out then that I need eight hours of sleep. Plus, by age, especially by aging, this will change. Before I needed seven and a half hours when I, when I was in my 20s. Now in my 30s, I need at least eight hours of sleep with one long deep sleep session. And this way, I can make sure that in most of the days, in most of the mornings, I feel energized enough to jump into the day and get the most out of myself. And one last thing here, the holy grail of health tracking is indeed sleep tracking, but the simplest thing you can do before buying a range of technologies to quantify your sleep is to use a smart sleep alarm. It helps you find out at what time you should go to bed and at what time exactly you should wake up. What I do with my smart sleep alarm is I provide a range, like wake me up between 5.40 and 6.10, and it has 30 minutes to find a spot when I'm just getting out of deep sleep, I'm in light sleep, so it's much easier for me to wake up. I will feel much more energized. Maybe I had the same sleep quality, maybe I had the same sleep quantity during the night, but if I wake up from deep sleep or light sleep, it can make a difference between life and death. Like you need three cups of coffee just to start a day, or you feel energized to, to jump right into your tests. But this process is very personal. 
It depends on how you live your life, what kind of diet you are pursuing, what kind of exercises you have, what parts of your life can influence your sleep. But I'm here for you to help. I'm happy to share all the insights I've learned besides the ones I've described to you in this video. Just leave a comment about what kind of struggles do you have in quantifying your sleep or what part of your data you can't understand, you interpret, and I will do my absolute best to help you. Because the more people sleep better, I think the more peaceful world we will have. So sleep better and let's quantify your sleep. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the Digital Health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.